Oh hey, uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas food photography, Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, even Christmas Eve, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now today, it's Christmas Eve, you know? It's Christmas Day tomorrow. Let's talk about what we all want to talk about, which is food. Christmas food, and then let's, you know, tie that into photography, Christmas food photography. <laughs> How are we going to take pictures of our Christmas food? How are we gonna get really awesome looking pictures? Obviously this does apply to uh, food in general. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed food. However, you know, it's definitely a Christmassy time. So why not get some great pictures of the turkey and the mince pies and Christmas pudding and all that kind of cool stuff. We're gonna run through a few different things. We're gonna talk about lighting. We're gonna talk about styling, backgrounds and things like that and, and, and surfaces and textures and all that cool stuff. We're gonna talk about angles and we're gonna talk about lens choice and kind of settings and things like that. So let's just dive straight in. So the first thing we're talking about is how you're going to light your scene, how you're going to light your photo. There's a few options here. So the first option we're going to talk about is natural light. And this is probably the easiest way to get into doing a bit of food photography. So you can set up your scene near to a window and you're going to get very nice natural diffused light coming in through that window. It looks great. It's perfect for food photography because it's going to, it's going to cast that very, very soft light over the scene. It's perfect because the light's so soft, it's wrapping around things, you get very, very soft shadows. And because it's coming through a window, and it's natural light, it's very diffused anyway, especially if it's like a cloudy day. It's absolutely perfect for this kind of thing. It's very, very easy to set up, literally just set up by a window. So that's a great way to get into food photography and start getting those photos without worrying too much about setting up lights. However, if you do want to set up some lights, and this time of year, especially in the UK, it gets dark unbelievably early and also for a long time. So there's just not a lot of natural light to play around with. So I tend to use uh, actual lights this time of year. Now I tend to use a continuous light, uh, but you can absolutely use a flash as well, but you just want to soften it up. You want to diffuse that. So I use a soft box and then I'll sometimes pop something else in front of that as well. Some other additional diffusion, but you just want to soften that up so it's nice soft light. That way it's going to give nice soft shadows, you're not going to get harsh shadows, it's just going to look very, very nice. Now generally I'll set that off to one side, up high facing down so that I'm getting a nice amount of light spread across the whole scene. I generally think that looks nice but you can kind of play around with the exact positioning. Of course you can use additional lighting within your styling which is what we're going to come on to in a moment. So things like candles or even for some stuff neon lights can look really good. That can add a bit of a colour cast to your photo as well. Certainly around Christmas time it wouldn't be crazy to have a couple of kind of Christmassy lights just coming into the photo. And that brings us on very nicely to styling and actually creating kind of a, a styled scene. So you've got your food, whether it's a mince pie, whether it's a Christmas pudding, whether it's sausage rolls, whether it's anything, you've got your food there, but by itself, that can look a little bit boring. You know, just one mince pie sat there, one little sausage roll, something like that, that can look a little bit boring. So you want to style the scene. So how are you going to do that? Well, the first thing you want to think about is the background or the surface that it's going to be on. So for example, the difference between having your mince pies or your Christmas pudding or anything like that on a nice wooden surface, which is going to give a very different look to, let's say, a kitchen counter. Or let's say you want to go for a really colourful surface that could maybe offset something that's on there. So strawberries, for example, on a, on a bright blue or bright green surface, that might look really nice. Whereas a wooden surface, it's going to give more of a rustic feel uh, and kind of a very different, just a different feel to the photo. Similarly with backgrounds, if you're not shooting top down, and again, we'll get onto angles in a minute, but if you're not shooting top down and you've got a background to your photo, you want to think about what's going to be visible there. Do you want some lighting? Do you want some bokeh? Do you want different splashes of colour? What do you want to be in the scene? In fact, what do you want to be in the scene is actually a big part of how you're going to style these photos. Now, styling these food photography photos, it's kind of an art in and of itself. 
it's a whole part of this which is really really important so for example if we're using christmas food photography as our kind of example here let's say we've got mince pies and things like that dotted around we're going to probably want to have maybe some christmasy pine cones maybe off to one side so they're just poking into the photo maybe there's some beads or some tinsel or something draped very casually but actually very deliberately just so it's in frame it's not taking away from the subject which is whatever food you've prepared but it is just adding the christmasy vibe so in this situation maybe a pine cone or something like that is going to actually add to the christmasy feel of the photo you don't have to interfere too much with where the subject is but it definitely can just help build a story of what's going on similarly you could do something like have let's, let's stick with mince pies for a second you could have mince pies laid out looking very very nice but then off to the side maybe there's a bit of flour scattered about a rolling pin maybe a little bit of dough just from where someone's been making the mince pies it kind of creates this story and then if that's on a nice wooden surface that's a really rustic feel that just looks so so good choosing what to include and what not to include in your photo is a big part you don't want things to be messy you don't want things to be too chaotic but you also don't want them to be too structured you want to strike a fine balance between including enough kind of story elements enough to create a certain vibe without overdoing it and then that brings us on to angles what angles should you be shooting these photos from now i have three angles that i like to shoot from uh, of course you can absolutely get creative and shoot from almost any angle there's no wrong answer really but there's three angles that i'll tend to go for now the first one and the kind of go-to angle is top down so this is where you have the camera right over the food so the food at the bottom the camera right over the top pointing straight down that's really great for capturing kind of the the texture and the color of a plate of food or something like a mince pie or something like a christmas cake or anything like that that looks great from above you know a lot of food looks great from above so that's a great angle to go for it's also very easy to then style things because you just have them kind of encroach into the frame a little bit and lighting similarly you're going to get nice kind of soft shadows it's all going to look very very nice so top down is one of my favorites but you can also go for kind of a kind of a 45 degree angle so instead of top down like that you might want to go something like that so still shooting from up high but down onto the food at an angle instead of straight down. So down at an angle. Now this is gonna give you, again, you're gonna get a lot of the detail from the top of the food. So if there's color, if there's texture, stuff like that, that's gonna look great. But you are gonna get some of the side as well. So in cake, for example, this can look great because you're getting the top of the cake, but you're also getting, maybe if it's cut as well, you're getting the inside of the cake. You're getting a little bit of that side, which looks really, really good. It's still easy to style because you can just have things kind of encroaching in. Lighting still looks great because you've got nice soft light coming in. And if you shoot from the right angle, if you if you position the light in the right way, it can still look really, really good. And it's definitely one to play around with. This one, you do have to be a little bit more mindful of the background because shooting from this kind of angle as opposed to up high, means that you are probably going to see a little bit further so whether you want to have bokeh kind of christmas lights in the background that are just blurred out whether you want to have splashes of color or you want to try and keep it plain you know there's a lot of different things that you can do and the third angle that i'll generally go for is just a straight side on so eye level with the food and a straight side on now this works great for things like maybe a christmas pudding that's on fire that looks awesome you know there's a few reasons why you wouldn't want to do that from up high from from over the top of it obviously the fire and the heat not ideal but it's going to look better side on because you can get the flames coming up you know christmas pudding doesn't look better from above you know you can see it really nicely from the side so that's a great one sometimes cake can work really well like this as well because you might have if you've cut into the cake you might have really interesting textures within the cake and colors and things like that there's a lot that works fully side on and that's definitely one to experiment with so we've covered lighting we've covered styling we've covered angles as well let's talk a little bit about the settings that you might shoot at so i often use a 24 to 70 millimeter lens for food photography the main reason for that is it allows me to shoot a slightly wider shot or zoom in and get a slightly closer shot it's just very easy very versatile to shoot with i find it very very useful 
within food photography to be able to just i don't have to be changing lenses if i'm not using that then i'll, I'll maybe go for something like an 85 millimeter f 1.4 if i want that kind of compressed soft and shallow depth of field shot then that's a great lens to use and that's what you want to be deciding here is how much do you want things in focus now with food photography i will often shoot at something like f 5.6 or even f 8 even sometimes up to f11 the reason for that being that i want to have all of the food nicely in focus and probably some of the stylings as well the situation where i wouldn't be doing that if i'm shooting side on so let's say onto a nice christmas pudding that's on fire and i want the background blurred out or i've got some lights in the background that i want i want them to become like nice bokeh light balls then i might go for something more like f 2.8 or even f 1.8 or something like that you know i don't want to go too shallow because i want to make sure that the food is all in focus but in that situation where i want to blur the background i'll go for something a little faster f 2.8 for example you want to be basing your aperture decision pretty much on what the look of the photo you want to go for now shutter speed is going to depend a little bit on the kind of look you want to go for as well so i'll often shoot on a tripod because it allow me to use a slower shutter speed uh, which basically means i can use a smaller aperture letting less light in but i have the shutter open for longer so it's not so much of a worry if the food is stationary you can use a slower shutter speed without any problems at all and if the camera's on a tripod that's no worries now that's that is key though is if the food is stationary so if you're doing things like popping a bit of icing sugar over the top you don't want to go too slow on the shutter speed otherwise it's not going to look very good similarly you don't want to go too fast because you might want a little bit of motion blur on the uh, on the icing sugar that's falling so i would base the shutter speed on what is your situation with motion in the shot and how much light do you need coming into the sensor if you need a lot of light coming in maybe use a slightly slower shutter speed if you need to capture a little bit of motion probably go a little bit faster you don't have to go super fast unless you want a very very crisp shot of something like custard being poured or something like that now i hope you found all of these tips helpful if you do have any questions about anything to do with christmas food photography or food photography at all or really just photography pop them down in the comments below we'll go back to you asap if you have any thoughts or any tips because we've really just scratched the surface of the kind of basics of christmas food photography here pop them down there as well i'll pop a full list of all the kit we use for these photos down in the description this is the end of our christmas content advent calendar so thank you so much for watching if you watched any of them or indeed if you watched all of them i do hope you have a fantastic christmas merry christmas from all of us here at park cameras i will see you probably before the new year huh? little christmas break and then because you know what day new year's eve is don't you tuesday i'll see you then for sure and as always Thanks for watching.